Welcome to the clubhouse. My name is Alice and I'm thrilled to see you this fine Saturday. No wait, what day is it? Well, we usually do wine bottles on Wednesdays, so let's call it a Wednesday. Today we're going to get into some glass cutting, a special kind of glass cutting really, the kind of cutting that leaves you with an awesome upcycled glass like this one right here. Or this sweet little fella right here. That's right, Craft Buddies, it's wine bottle glasses. I guess I gave that away in the intro, but what I didn't give away is our hard-earned secret method we have for getting great level score lines and clean and even cuts most of the time. There are always problem children, but we have some solutions for those too. So this little beauty you see right here is our OK Woodshop Cut-O-Matic 1000, made from the finest MDF available in our wood pile. It's a machine of our own design that has been used to cut 10 years of Wednesday night workshops. That's some fine craftsmanship right there. Almost the finest. OK Woodshop. So the ribs in here not only look cool, but they also allow you to insert a depth fence at the height, glass height of your choosing. Juice glass, rocks glasses, Tom Collins, all those bits. The glass cutter that comes pre-installed on the Cutomatic 1000 is adjustable for bottles of different diameter. And this lovely kit also comes with some safety glasses and if you're local, an empty wine bottle. We're actually in the process of making a new batch right now because we've sold all but two of the jigs from our last run. I was so covered in sawdust today that Frank barked at me when I came in the house. <laughs> we should have done those and we should have those done in a couple more days. There are so many glue ups y'all. Right. Well, if you think that this looks like the most fun you can have on a whatever day it is, wine bottle kits are now on sale at 5in1socialclub.com. Also, a little side note, I will need some extra hands for this, so I've enlisted the help of my hairstylist and proofreader, Michael, so don't be alarmed when I suddenly grow a new pair of much hairier arms. All right, are y'all ready to have some fun? Let's get into it. So what you'll need to make your very own wine bottle glasses, an OK Woodshop wine bottle jig, safety glasses, boiling water, room temp water, 120 grit wet dry sandpaper. Now our kits actually include 80 and 220 grits as well, but you can for sure get by with just some 120. You'll want a bus tub. Sometimes your bottles break badly and it's nice to have those pieces contained. And of course, some empty wine bottles. Okay y'all, before we get into all the broken glass and party times, let's talk about that PPE. So safety glasses are a must here, or really anytime you're cutting glass. Gloves, now those are up to you. I use my hands an awful lot and I'm pretty used to keeping them out of harm's way. Now this next one is really important to hear y'all. Are you listening? No eating or drinking while you're working. We're making glass dust and you don't want to ingest any of that. That's how they killed that mafia guy on HBO's Oz, ground glass. Yeah, let's keep our drinks off the glass cutting table. And when you're finished, make sure to wash your hands. We're all super practiced at that now, aren't we? Okay, let's learn our way around this thing, shall we? There are tons of bottle cutters out there for you to buy, but this one is ours and we love it. Using this design, you move the bottle past the fixed cutting edge here instead of trying to manipulate a blade around a circle. Trust me, this makes it way easier and you get much more precise cuts this way. So this right here is the glass cutter and this little wheel is what's going to score your bottle. These blocks of wood are your depth fence. They let you choose the height of your glass. And as you can see, there are a ton of options. Two, four, five, seven, yeah, a ton. You can even adjust the height in increments of a half inch using this triangle micro adjuster. This is actually the smallest you'll need you'll be able to make your glass because you need to have one rib exposed to rest your bottle. So we're going to take our bottle and rest it in the V. Because you have to roll your bottle in that V, only round bottles will work in our jig. No ovals, no squares, no triangles. 
We recommend soaking those bottles to remove the labels first. Bottles with the label on are less likely to break evenly, but you can certainly try it if the label is what makes it special. And you'll want to be sure to remove those caps and corks. That's the danger zone, y'all. Now, before you score, you're going to want to consider the shape of your bottle. As you start to look at them more closely, you'll start to notice that some bottles have very curvy necks. And if you choose a glass height too high on that neck, the scoring wheel will not make contact because of the curve. It will also be super awkward to drink out of. I mean, have you ever tried to do a shot out of an eggshell? No? Just me? Really? No one? Dang. You also want to look at the general shape of the bottle. Bottles that are flat from the shoulder to the base, like this one, will sit perfectly in the jig. But if you look at your bottle and you see that it's got some ladylike curves in the caboose, it will need to be shimmed to make sure it rests flat in the jig. That's an important one, y'all. The bottle's got to sit flat or your score line won't line up. Now, you can use a piece of wood or some cardboard for a shim. Now lastly, those bottles with glass decorations or screen printed labels um, can be a little trickier. You'll need to be mindful of the placement on the cutting head in relation to the lumps or the prints. But again, they're tricky, so you may want to practice on some straight bottles first. Now that you've picked the perfect height for your glass and shimmed where necessary, you're going to place the bottle in the jig, making sure the cutting wheel makes contact with the glass. Your glass cutter is adjustable for larger and smaller bottles. Sometimes you may have to adjust your fence to a different height. If the glass cutter is moving a lot, you'll want to tighten that wing nut inside. So this is where I like to involve a partner. Extra hands to hold the jig and the fence in place make it so much easier to concentrate on spinning the bottle and getting a solid score line. So I'm going to spin the bottle towards or into the glass cutter. You should apply just enough pressure to hear the sound of the glass scratching. If you push too hard, you will dull your cutting wheel super fast. When you hear that sweet, wicked screech, you've got enough down pressure. It needs a shim. To get a good break when we shock the bottle, it's important to get a nice, straight, and connected score line. To help you do this, take care to spin the bottle by the body, not the neck. Keep your hands close together while spinning. I can't stress enough how important this is. Seriously, y'all, don't spin the bottle by the neck. Your score line will be wavy and there will be tears. Now, make sure you give the bottle one complete spin. Don't go around more than once. You don't want to accidentally make two score lines. Remember, the score doesn't have to be deep as long as you can see it. A scratch, one scratch, is enough. All right, we're going to do another one here. Double check before you move on to the next step that your score line is completely connected all the way around. If you need to, you can line up and rescore any missing parts. Just turning it a little bit. Some bottles are weird and may have flat spots or seams that need a little extra attention on the cutting wheel. All right, we're going to do one more. <laughs> Now, if your score line is terrible, can y'all see that? I had a big whoops here. Don't worry, it happens. You can rescore one inch or so below that first score line or just choose another bottle. So we're gonna rescore that. I'm gonna move my fence. Now I'm well below that original score line and around we go. So now I have two score lines in this one. Now for the magic. 
Um, it's science really, y'all. We're going to use boiling water to shock the glass so it separates along our score line. This is another job that's best with two people. One person is going to spin the bottle, and it's super important to spin it quickly and steadily. You never want to pour water on a stationary bottle. I like to rest the end of the bottle on a cup in my tub. I'm going to hold it away from me at an angle so the water runs away from me and into the tub. I like to rest the neck of the bottle between my thumb and my forefinger, like so. And now I'm going to practice spinning a little. We want to evenly heat and cool this bottle for a perfect shock along our score line. To do this, we pour the hot water in a steady stream, aiming right for that score line. Again, make sure you're not pouring water on a stationary bottle. You always want it to be spinning first. You're going to pour that hot water for 20 seconds, and that's Mississippi seconds, y'all. One Mississippi, two Mississippi. Then switch quickly to the cold water for 10 seconds. Repeat these two steps until the bottle turns into a glass. Ready? I wasn't counting 10 Mississippi, 11 Mississippi, 12 Mississippi, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 Mississippi, 19 Mississippi, 20 Mississippi. Now for the cold water. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five Mississippi, six Mississippi, seven Mississippi, eight Mississippi, nine, ten. Woo! So fun. All right. Now, if you're having trouble, you'll want to make sure that your water is boiling hot. Also, some bottles are thicker, like champagne bottles. These will take longer to heat up and cool down, so you can actually increase the hot water pour time to 30 seconds and 15 seconds for the cold water. Also, make sure you're counting nice and slow. So we're gonna make another one. And this time I'm using that one where I messed up the original score line. So I'm working down here. We're gonna aim for that second score line to encourage it to break there. All right. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's going to be a good one, y'all, I can tell. One, whoop, all right. Once you've released your glass from the bottle, it's time to sand. We've got some wet, dry sandpaper in 120 grit. You'll want to get your glass and your sandpaper wet. It's important as you work to keep them wet because of the glass dust that you're creating. If you see white powder around the rim of your glass, it's a reminder to re-wet your sandpaper and the glass. So you can go round and round, up and down,
Now this step can take anywhere from five to 20 minutes. I'm not gonna do that to you, y'all. <laughs> that depends on the thickness of your glass, and you'll know you're done when the rim of your glass changes from shiny to frosted. You'll need to dry your glass to check it because wet glass is shiny. If you find some deep spots that aren't frosting, you can get at them with a smaller piece of sandpaper. I'll show you that. So here you can see some frosted right here. And here is some shiny. And that's just a little bit, so you're going to go at that for a little while. And once you've done that, and if you find you still have some of these little spots, you're going to grab a little piece of sandpaper. Get it wet. Don't forget to keep things wet. And then you can sand. I'm going to exaggerate a little bit, but you can sand that little spot. I also like to use the hand sandpaper to soften, soften the outside edges of the glass. The scoring can sometimes leave a real rough edge. Now, you'll want to be sure to wash these glasses carefully before you use them, and be sure to clean your workspace and your hands to get all that glass dust up. Let's show on Michael a finished glass in the close-up camera. You see how nice and frosted that is? Get it in the light just right. Or this one. So it's got a nice soft edge when you're done. Y'all, this has been and remains one of our most popular workshops. It seems that y'all just can't get enough of this Pinterest favorite. Everybody has a great time until the sanding begins, though, and then the room goes pretty quiet. Actually, it's crazy loud with 10 people grinding their glasses down. But you can really see the moment a person realizes that in order to have a great looking glass, like this one, they're going to have to put in a fair amount of elbow grease. That really seems to be the falling off point of the fun for some folks. Myself, I actually love the slow and easy repetitiveness of the grinding. It's kind of like knitting. Something for my hands to do while my mind is elsewhere. Thinking about margaritas and cheese dip. I really do miss margaritas and cheese dip. Anyhow, this is Alice signing off from our Summer Avenue Clubhouse with no margaritas and no cheese dip. See you soon!